Welcome back to our basic WordPress tutorial series put on by the UCF College of Sciences web department. Check out the menu on the right where you can click to view the full video series playlist. Or you can click to view the previous video entitled Site Content, which covered posts, pages, the media library, and the WordPress editor and more. Or jump ahead and click the next video on Themes, dealing with recommendations, how to install, preview, activate, and more. In this video, we'll cover layout. This includes popular content embedding, custom menus, widgets, theme options, and other customizations. Once again, please note this tutorial covers WordPress 3.9 and covers installations with similar WordPress functionality and administrative aesthetics. All right, so let's begin. Okay, here's where we left off. I've done a couple things since I talked to you last. Um, I added a couple different pages. So I made a welcome page, as you can see, welcome and welcome. Um, and um, I made a couple pages based on, just so we could have a couple more things up in the menu here. Just one for the uh, the first video, the second video. Uh, so if I click on this, it's just some of the stuff we covered. And okay, since we're gonna be talking about menus in a little bit, I wanted to go ahead and just get a little bit of a menu structure going there. So that's just set up, so we'll mess around with that in a minute. But first off, um, there's something we kind of skipped over in the last video when talking about um, site content, and that was popular content embedding. Um, so if you wanted to embed a YouTube video, or maybe something from Spotify or RDO or Vimeo or a video or audio site like that, WordPress will let you really easily embed that into your website without messing with the, um, the tricky embed code or knowing any HTML or anything like that. So let me go ahead and show you what we're talking about. I've got this tab open here with a page I've been editing. This is the third video page. So on this page you can see I've got my heading one up at the top, which is just my title, a little bit of text, a bulleted list, and what seems to be just a couple of links on the page here. Now, what WordPress does is really nice. If you paste in a URL of one of its designated embed um, types of content, it'll automatically, when this page loads on the front end, it'll automatically do the embed code for you. So, if I go ahead and update this page, and then go up here and view this in a new tab. Don't want to ruin the surprise, but I'll go ahead and click over here. And we can see that we have something from Spotify embedded in, and we also have um, the nice embed code of one of our first WordPress tutorial videos that we did. So let me tell you a little bit more about this. So how this works is, like I said, there's a list of pre-approved um, HTTP links or URLs that WordPress will automatically change over for you. Now to access this list, what you can do is you can go up here to the right, top right, and click on help. And then over here there's a, a button called inserting media. And then click on this link that says learn more about embeds. So if I do that, I pull up this new tab, and it has in a nutshell, you know, you can about some information about embedding. And what you have to do is just insert the URL, plain as can be. No, I mean, you just need to make sure it's not a link and it's on its own line, and that's pretty much it. So we'll actually go down here to the list. If you want to read the specifics here, you can, but here's the full list of the different services that this works with. Um, like I said, it's mostly uh, video sites. So you want to do something from Hulu or YouTube or um, RDO. You can do things from... Um, meetup.com, photo bucket, uh, WordPress TV, different things like that. So you do have some options. And like I said, all you do is you grab the URL from the address bar and you paste it in. So for instance, if I jumped over, I have a tab open here with our YouTube video. Um, normally what you would do is you would jump down to share, would you jump down to embed code. You know, you would copy this embed code and then you would have to come back here you couldn't just paste it in here because that wouldn't work. You'd have to jump over to the text view, which has got all that, that weird code view, and you know, paste that in like that and hope you didn't, you know, mess anything up, and then you'd come back and you know WordPress would put that in for you. But instead of doing all that, all you have to do is just go up to the top in your address bar, copy that, 
Come back here and get rid of that one. And I'll just show you as an example. Just paste that in there. Make sure it's not a link. So if I paste this in here, I'm, I'm got my cursor in there and one of these is lit up, that's a link. You want to highlight it and then make sure that it's not by either clicking remove link or clear formatting. And when I click update and click view page, there it is, automatically embedded for me. So that's just a quick thing about how to automatically embed content into your website really easy without having too much um, to worry about or, or fussing around with. Okay, the next thing we want to do is mess around with custom menus. And I talked a little bit about it before in the last video about how WordPress does menus by default. Um, so you may be asking, why would I want to do a custom menu? Isn't the default menu system work well enough with you know, des designating the parent-child relationship and using the order fields? Shouldn't that do everything? Well, for some people, yes, that'll be enough. But if you want to do anything in your menu that's not a page, then you're gonna to have to use a custom menu. What I mean by that is by default, the default menu is just a list of pages. If you wanted to put a link to your blog that you have in this WordPress install, that won't work. If you wanted to link to a category, well, that wouldn't work. Uh, if you wanted to link to another website in your menu, that wouldn't work. You would have to use the custom menu for that. So right now, by default, this is just done with the page attributes section of, of the pages where you can choose the parent-child relationship and the order field. Now you'll still wanna use the parent-child relationship because when you're on your back end of your website, and let's say we go to our all pages section, that's still gonna to correspond to the ordering here. And it's still gonna to correspond to um, the parent-child relationship. It'll just make it easier for you um, to be able to really quickly visually tell, oh, that's a child page of that. So you still want to use the parent uh, drop-down menu, but as far as the custom menu, there's a couple things we can do. So first thing is we need to you know, go to the um, custom menu section, and that's under appearance and menus. And just as we mentioned before in WordPress, there's usually a couple different ways you can do things. So you can do it the way I just showed you by going to appearance and menus. Or if you're on the front end of the website, you can hover over the home button and site title here, and then go down to menus. That'll also take you to the same place. So this is the screen you're gonna get. Right now we don't have a menu created, so I'll go ahead and do that first. So I'll just title mine main menu, and then click on create menu. And here we go, now we're ready to rock. So depending on your theme, your theme may have multiple menu locations. And what I mean by that is usually by default, it'll definitely have one towards the top, but sometimes it might have one at the bottom or maybe have one over here in the sidebar or something like that. So you can have multiple menus on your website. Actually, um, it'll, it's a widget feature to have a menu in the sidebar or another widget section, but we'll get to that more when we cover widgets. So let's stick with the main menu right now. So we'll go back to our menu section, and we've got our main menu that we just created. And if I want, um, we have some options. Um, like I said, there's a couple theme locations. So we'll choose the top primary menu. That's what this one's called in this theme. We'll save that here. All right, and it says it's been updated, so now, if I go back to my website, hit refresh, my menu disappeared. Well, what happened? Well, we haven't added anything to the menu yet. So right now, main menu is blank, which means it's going to be blank here. So what we can do to add content to that is look at these little sections over here. So by default, though, there will be three. You'll have the pages section, which is just going to be a list of all the internal pages that you've created in your pages area. There's links. When you expand this, you'll see that this is where you would do a custom link. So if you wanted to link to an external website, or if you wanted to link to a document in your media library, you could paste that URL in there, and that would be an easy way to have a, a PDF or a Word document or something that someone would need to download or access really easily in your menu. 
The last default section is categories. So if you are using the blog functionality, um, we mentioned you know making categories to organize your content and your blog posts. Um, you could have a category in your menu. Um, right now, there aren't any categories. There's well, there is the one that we've created called new category. So if I wanted, I could check that box and click add to menu. Um, if your plugins or your theme has additional areas, you can add them to the available ones by coming up here, clicking on screen options, and then here it'll let you add a few different sections. Um, so if you wanted to add a specific individual post uh, to the menu, you can do that. See if I, I uncheck this, um, section goes away. So if I click it again, all right, I've got posts. So if I expand that, oh, there's a view of all my posts. So if I want to add an individual one, I can do that by having that show on the screen. Um, if I wanted my tags to show up, I could do that. Uh, and then there's also format. So by default, these three work for me. So I'll go ahead and do that. OK, so I want to add a page. So well, I want my home page on there. So I want that. Uh, I'll hit Add to Menu. And there we go. Anytime you check one of these and click Add to Menu, it'll go to the bottom of the menu structure that you've created. So just a heads up on that. But the good thing is, the menu custom menu system is very easy to use. It's drag and droppable. So you can, when I move my mouse cursor over this item, the cursor icon changes to this kind of drag drop interface. So I can move that up or down um, to move it up or down the list, or left or right to designate um, a parent or child field. So I have welcome. Now, right now, I don't have a page just called videos or something like that. Maybe I wanted something to contain the first, second, and third videos. So what I can do is come down to links, and I can make one that doesn't go anywhere when you click on it, but it shows up in the menu. So what I can do is clear out URL, and I can put in the pound sign or hashtag and give it a title. So if I wanted to call this videos, and I click add to menu, this will show up that, the, hey, this is a custom. So over here on the right of the item, it'll let you know the type it is. So this is a page. This is a custom one. If I added a category, it would say category. So now if I hit save menu, and go back to my website, I will see two new items. I will see welcome and videos. So if I click on welcome, it'll just reload this page. If I click on videos, you'll notice um, the bottom left-hand corner of the screen it has the, the pound sign. So when I click on this, nothing's going to happen because you, you see up here, that's kind of a universal thing of it's not going anywhere. Um, so that will actually work to my advantage. So if I wanted to add the three video pages I've created underneath the videos section, I can click Add to Menu. And then, uh-oh, that's not the right order. Well, what can I do? I can reorder it really easy. So I click and hold it down and just drag it up. And all right, that should do it, right? And this should be under there. But wait, uh-oh. No, nope, they're, they're top level or they're on the main menu. So what happened was we forgot to move them over or to indent them or make them a sub page. Um, to do that, you just drag it to the right and you see it, it goes over a little bit. And then when I let go, you can see right where my mouse is, it says, it now says sub item. So this means that this is gonna show up as a sub page. So if I move this one up, move it over one. If I move it over two, this would actually be a sub sub page. Well, we don't want to go that crazy right off the bat. So we'll move those. We'll hit save. And then there you go. Now we have a drop down of our, of our videos. So once again, if I click on this, I'll go to the first video. Click this. I'll go to welcome. If I click this, because I did it as the pound sign or hashtag. It's not going to go anywhere. And there you go. That's the super, super basics of doing a custom menu. Um, like I said, you can make multiple menus. If you wanted to have one that, that's active only during certain times, you could do that. You could make, for instance, 
main menu fall, main menu spring, and then just swap them out by editing a new menu and making sure that the one you want is selected. So for instance, let's go ahead and make another one. We'll call this main menu backup. And I'll create this menu. And now something new has happened up here. This will let us know there's a new drop down feature that'll let us know which menu we're currently editing. So right now we're working on main menu backup. Um, and if I come down here to my theme location, this is going to tell me, hey, the main menu, the original one, is currently the main one. But if I wanted to overwrite that, I could hit save menu and then go back here and that'll replace it with my new one which is blank so I don't want to do that so I'll uncheck that hit save and then I'll just go back tell it I want to edit my main menu again and save that and that'll so that's a way you can have multiple menus or ones maybe one for a different time of the year or if you do want to use one in the widget section now speaking of widgets um, let's go to that. So what are widgets? Well, widgets are different areas on your website where you can put different pockets of content. So for instance, a sidebar is a widget area. So this is a, this is a widget area right here. Um, and this will really depend on your theme. So some themes have a sidebar. Some themes might be full width and not have a sidebar. Some have a footer where you have pockets to put information in down at the bottom. Sometimes they have one or two or three. Sometimes you can have them on the left and the right and on the bottom. So we need to check out first off the widget section and what's available for our theme. So to do that, well, there's a couple of things we can do or a couple of ways we can get to it. If we hover, hover over the home icon and then our site title, we can come down to widgets and that'll take us to the area. Or if we go down to appearance and widgets, that'll take us to our widget area right now. So if we take a look at our theme, we can see that these are our widget areas or the different areas available to put widgets into. This theme currently has three. The primary sidebar, which it tells us is the main sidebar that appears on the left. The content sidebar, which will be, uh, this is the content section here, so which will be an area right here. And then there's also a footer widget area with nothing in it right now, but that will be down at the bottom. So looking over here on the left, this is a list of all available widgets. Uh, right now these are the ones by default and these are active and available. There's also widgets that can be the result of plugins. Um, like I mentioned in the first video, plugins, you can think of them kind of as apps, different things you can add to your site to extend the functionality of it. So once again, if you had a forms plugin, Maybe there would be a, a forms widget that would now be available that you could add to one of the widget areas. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at this primary sidebar right now. Uh, right now, if we look at the front end, there's a bunch of stuff in here. And that stuff corresponds to this stuff. So there's a search bar, there's a recent post area, there's a recent comments area, archives, categories, and a spot called meta, which is just uh, some of your your basic stuff like your login or, or things like that. So if I wanted to clear these out and start over, what I could do is I could just drag these out and just drag it out of there and that goes away. Um, see if I drag it out, if you see up here next to available widgets, that little blue text that says deactivate recent posts. So that goes there. If I wanted to drag it out but save the settings, what I could do is drag it down to this inactive widget section down at the bottom and as it says it says drag widgets here to remove them from the sidebar but keep their settings so that's a way if you wanted to temporarily get rid of a widget and then bring it back at a later date you would just drag it down here so there's also another way to get rid of them if I expand this by clicking on the arrow I can just click delete and that'll get rid of it as well so there's a couple of different ways you can do that so now you'll notice there's no save button on here. As soon as I do that, make changes here, um, they'll be active. Now there are save buttons sometimes inside the widget. So if I expand this, there's a save button there. But as soon as I drag that out, there's no save button here. 
And if I refresh my page, now this is completely empty on the left here. So to add one back, it's similar to the menu system where it's drag and drop. I could um, drag in a list of our pages. Drag that up here and I could give it a title, our pages. And then, you know, there's gonna be different options for each one. I'm not gonna go through all the options of the different widgets um, that's for you to do. Just look at them, they should have, um, be self-explanatory. Let me go ahead and save that there. Come back over here, hit refresh. And now we have a list of our pages with that, that nice title that we gave that. So, well, let's let's add something to this other bar since we can so we can see where that pops up. So let's do the search bar here, and we'll just give it a title that says search, or just say search the website or something, whatever you want. And there we go. So that shows us that is the area for um, that sidebar the content sidebar. So whatever we put in this column here is gonna show up here. And the good thing about the widgets is they show up on every page um, for, you know, if, if this is the home page or the side page or an inner page, whatever page, um, these will show up. So you can have content that is, you know, kind of static on every single page. Um, so if you wanted to contact us with some information or an address or a Google map or something, you could plop something like that in there. Now, something to take into consideration is um, going back to what we said about pages earlier certain themes have different page templates so if it might depend on a widget could be only in a certain template so if you add something to a widget and you're like well why isn't it showing up on the, the actual page well the first the first place to check is 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 that widget area only for a specific template Maybe, maybe not. So for the instance, this one, the welcome page, if we click edit page up here, I can see that this is using the default template. So I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say the default template has the sidebar in there. So if I change this, well, what happens if I change this to the full page one? So I'll update that. I'll click on view page. Uh-oh, see? That was a good example, it disappears. So now we know that sidebar content is not a part of the full page template. And if I go back to my first video, I can see, but it is part of the default one here. So that might be something I wanna leave. Maybe I want my home page to not have that, that sidebar content on there. So that's just something to consider when you add things to widgets and they may or may not show up on the home page. that might be why. Okay. And probably one of the more useful ones would be a text widget. What this is going to allow you to do, um, it's not as full-fledged as the WordPress editor, so I can't easily add images or links or things like that. But if I just wanted to add some text in here, uh, I could, I could, you know, paste that in here. So this is, this is a text widget. Um, I love WordPress. Could add that in there and now if I reload refresh 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 and I scroll down yeah this is a footer one so yeah it was gonna be down at the bottom so that that's a text one um, with this text widget it will allow you to paste in or to type in HTML code if you know it so you could add an image or something like that in there that way if you'd like um, there is a really good plugin that will allow you to use the WordPress editor in the widgets um, if you go to the plugin section don't worry we'll cover plugins in another video but if you just go to the plugin section and search for black well the plugins called the black studio tiny MCE plugin I know it's a mouthful um, I'll show you what it does in the other video but what just a uh, real quick thing is it'll allow you to use the WordPress editor so you can use that easy to use interface to insert text or make it bold or bigger, different colors or images or links. Um, so that's something you can do there. So that's pretty much the widget section. Um, as I mentioned with menus, um, you can actually add menus to widgets. So there is the 
a custom menu one. So if I wanted to add that here, I can just say custom menu widget. And then I can select from the menus I've created. So if I wanted, for instance, the main menu and the sidebar again, I can do that. Go back up and go to an inner page where this is going to show up. There we go, custom menu widget, there it is again. So if you wanted a custom menu that, that shows up in a certain section, you know, you can definitely use that as well. So that's pretty much it for widgets. The last thing I'm gonna to touch on with layout is uh, the theme options. Now theme options are super specific to the theme you choose. And in the next video, we'll go over, um, you know, how to, how to pick a theme, uh, some of the options available with themes, the good ones, the bad ones, you know, that, that sort of information. But we'll go over this real quick. Um, like I said, we'll go over it more in the next video. But theme options, uh, more specifically, the customize. So if I'm under appearance and I click on customize, what this is going to do is this is going to show me my theme and it's going to show me my site content kind of in a preview. And what I can do is um, I have access to some of the basic settings and some of the basic things I can change. So for instance, if I wanted to see what my site would look like if I changed the name, say my awesome site, well, that's not going to be the final one. And I wanted it to be a uh, super awesome site. I could change that. No, oh, well, this is what it would look like here. Well, what would it look like if I, if I didn't have that? Okay, well, that's what it would look like. Um, and these changes aren't permanent until you click Save and Publish. So if I want to come down to Colors, I could say, oh, you know what? The background color, right now it's this, this gray, as you can see on the left and on the right. Maybe I really, really like this whole black motif thing. I could, I could click on that and, oh, that's what it would look like there. I'm like, okay. Um, this theme has a header image. Oh, I could, I could pop something in up there. So this will just let you expand and in, in mess around with the different options for your theme. Um, this is probably the easiest way to view what those would look like before actually pushing those changes live. Once again, this is appearance and customize. Um, you can see what it would look like if, um, well, what if I use this different menu? Okay, or what if I did this? What if I did that? So this is the easiest way to see those changes or to see those theme specific things that you can do with your site. Like, oh, these are the widget areas. Okay, I've got that one there. Um, so once again, this is just really high level. We'll go into more detail when we go into the, the themes video coming up next. Um, so can't wait for that. Hope you watch that video once again. It'll be themes, um, recommendations, how to install, preview, using ones from the WordPress store, maybe using one bought from a third, press, uh, a third party WordPress site. Um, how to activate, and once again, some pitfalls to stay away from. So thanks again for watching this video. Uh, like it if you liked it, and make sure to check out the other ones. Thanks a lot.